For us, the first three days, it was a hassle because there was a storm and we were all the time wet. We were all the time stepping into muds that are going as deep as our knees in, in, in the shoes getting stuck inside. We were crossing rivers up to our neck. Amin Malouf is a certified Ironman coach based in Dubai, but he's not your average athlete. Ever since he left his small hometown in Lebanon's Bekaa Valley, his life has centered around adventure and pushing the boundaries of the human body and the mind. I'm Nadia Michel, and this is TMR Thrill Seekers. I'm from Lebanon, from Zahle, and it's like a city in the mountains, more like a big village or uh, let's say a small city. And I lived there till I was like 17, 18, almost 99% of my time. I barely left the city. So my life was all around what I can do within that area. So it was full of scouts activities, adventures, scouting, climbing a bit, some hikes. And to be honest with you, all the rest of my free time was on Discovery Channel. I was living on that channel. So I decided to go to Australia, to Sydney, to do my master's there. Yeah, everybody told me it was like, what's wrong with you? Why you decide to go always to the furthest place possible in the world? When I came back from Australia, I was working in Lebanon. And I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the place is great and the work was good. But I was suffocating. I was feeling like I really need to experience something new. I really need to, to push those limits more and try something with the engineering, with the adventures, with everything outside. Like I really needed to, to see life better. And uh, I, I took the first offer that came to me, which was to Dubai. And when you come to Dubai, you, you live the life of Dubai first couple of years or a couple of months even. And then if you're that type, you stick to it. If not, you need to break out. So then I decided enough with this. I really need to start learning and experimenting as I go. So I decided every week I'm going to do something different. Every week I'm going to go a different place, even on my own. I did for almost six, seven months. I was just every weekend somewhere alone, just experimenting with my physical capabilities in sports, just uh, going adventures, just selecting a spot on the map, driving there, parking my car and just going on my own, just exploring it. And, and this was really an amazing uh, self-learning journey that you don't have much distractions. You just on your own. What do I want? What sticks? I keep it. What doesn't stick? It's a good experience. Let's move on to the next one. And why not live a happier life, stronger life, if, if we can do it while we're doing other things in life, like work and relationships and everything else. Amin has taken this approach to the next level. When I interviewed him on Zoom, I could see a wall behind him in his apartment that was covered in medals and trophies. He swims, he cycles, and he's a long-distance endurance runner. But none of that really prepared him for the Jungle Ultra a five-day race deep in the Peruvian Amazon. The terrain is a combination of dense jungle and high cloud forest running from the Andes Mountains to the Madre de Dios River. Its lowlands are only accessible by boat, making it hard to reach. I didn't believe that it was ranked one of the hardest in the world, but after I did it, I really believed it, yeah. It is the hardest race in the world uh, as on foot running. And I participated in it in 2019. We were talking with my friends who are some of them also into running. And they were talking about this is like a really big race. We should give it a try. And I just jumped in with them. It's basically a 230 kilometers for five days running, not running on road. It's running in the jungle of the Amazon in the rainforest of the Peru. And it's, as you imagine it in the movies, a dense rainforest with a lot of humidity, a lot of insects, a lot of animals around you, a lot of rivers. The fun part of it is that you are fully self-supported, which means I need to carry my food, my clothes, my medical kit, my survival kit, my hammock, which because I have to build my hammock every time, assemble it and pack it every day if I need to sleep in, in the checkpoints. And you just get the water from them or the hot water in the evening if you want to mix it with some food to eat. So it was something difficult on all levels. This is, we're talking now physically and logistically. If we start to talk about the, the terrain itself, 
it's it's extremely stressful on the body because there's a, a lot of elevations. Uh, I believe the total elevation was around nine to ten thousand meters of ups and downs because you start from three thousand meter altitude and then you start to go down and up, down and up until you reach the the, the lower part of the river. And uh, it was actually different environments because there is a lot of ecosystems you're going into it between cold and then hot and then strong rain. And the rivers also, sometimes you cross rivers up to your neck. Amin entered the race with three of his friends from Dubai. Together, they planned to run 40 to 50 kilometers each day in an attempt to complete the brutal race. You're standing there at the start of the line with another 50 super athletes from around the world and you're gonna do something that it's extremely dangerous and difficult but once you start you're just in it you don't think anymore you're just enjoying the environment it was really a struggle the first uh, three days the, for me the, the fourth day i started the day and i felt different i don't know what happened normally after three days of running like that you become drained you become weak I have felt a blast of energy and the guys noticed me. I was like running in front of them and then waiting and coming and then going and coming and going and coming. And then my friend told me to listen, man, you're jumping all over the place. Why don't you just blast and see what you can do? And at that moment, I was like in position 45. So I was like, okay, let's give it a try. And in one hour, I jumped from 45th to 10th position. I have no idea how I did it, but I was flying over people. And then I finished that day on seventh uh, position, and I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe like uh, how you think that your energy is finished, and then you discover there's another 50% remaining, but you didn't tap into it. Some of the days, like the last day, you start at four in the morning, and it's uh, in very difficult terrain, and there's high probability you'll finish in midnight or in the night. And some other days, because of the storm, we faced a lot of issues, so we ended up coming back in the night. And it, it's very annoying in the night when there's mud, it's slippery, you end up slipping like a mountain and hitting a, a tree. And then when you hit the tree, all the fire ants fall on you and they're biting you. So it's not something really comfortable with the mental part. But surprisingly, I, I felt I'm in my element because maybe because of the scouts life that I had when I was young. The last day was the hardest day because it was 70 kilometers crossing and only rivers was around three hours we need to cross and mountains and spikes of 3,000 meters. So when I started that day, I felt something is wrong with my feet. Something was painful in my ankle and it kept increasing to a level that if you calculate your pain from zero to 10, I'm, I'm like 11. It was really painful to a level that I, I was supporting my other feet on it a lot and both of them got injured. And I was lucky that my friend really supported me to get to the checkpoint, like mentally really supporting me with, with the ignorance of this pain. And you enter really dark caves in your mind with this pain that if you are, if you really surrender, you will just get out of the race. And a lot of people dropped out in that day. So uh, I reached the final part of it, which is climbing a mountain in the night and coming down. And the additional factor, the psychological factor of this is that inside the, the forest in the night, everything wants to attack you because you have a torch on your head. So spiders, fire ants, uh, insects, even some animals, they all attack you. Everything attack you. So that was not a, a really happy way to, to finish. Even, even the last three hours, I noticed that the director of the race and a couple of people even were running towards me and checking on me and I just kept running, but I was asking them, like, what's wrong? They said the people in front of me who were running, they saw an anaconda in the same place where I was running. So, so those stuff, if you really keep them in your mind, it, it will eat your head. So I had to really let go of those thoughts and keep running until I reached that day. I finished alone this day for 20 hours. As if the running and the environment weren't challenging enough, Amin had to carry all of his meals for five days. That means extra weight and also a lot of careful planning. Unlike for mountain climbing, snacks like Snickers bars or Doritos just wouldn't cut it for this high-intensity race. My, my full food was different from the normal food you eat. It has to be very efficient, very packed with calories and very specific because the more weight I carry, the more I have to run with it. And that's even more painful. So I calculated every single calorie I'm taking with me, and it was distributed between supplements of protein, carbs, and also some electrolytes for keeping the hydration high, 
some nuts and stuff to just to fill me up. Some also, if I want to go into technical part, perfetium and some supplements into the thing. And then you have some energy sustainability ones that you take them in the morning to boost your energy for the whole day to keep you packed with the levels. It was the least possible sugar intakes because not like pure sugar because it doesn't help you in such races. You can get, become spiky with uh, insulin levels because if you take sugar, you're going to spike and then you're going to drop after half an hour and then spike and then you drop and that's not good. And the food is is a very sensitive topic because if you don't test this for the first two to three months before the race, your stomach can get upset in the race and then you can collapse. What I mean by collapse is that the stomach just decides, doesn't want to absorb anything anymore at one moment. And then your body will not take anything and you'll be weak and then you will collapse. And many people face this over there from hydration, from food intake. By the end of the race, Amin had run for 57 hours over five days. He ran the last 30 kilometers on a twisted ankle, an injury that kept getting worse over those last few hours when he had to cross through muddy rivers often hitting his ankles against slippery rocks. But powering through the excruciating pain didn't kill him. It actually made him stronger. That song by Kelly Clarkson, it's true in all sorts of ways. For example, it's been scientifically proven that failing in your early career promotes future success. It can change the way that you see struggles at work or in relationships. It can change the perspective you see towards people. In a way that, for example, if you are having a struggle now, financially, career-wise, relationship, you start to think that, let me take myself out of that cave, which I'm stuck in it in my mind. Let me look at it from a different point of view. Let me see how I can push through this pain. Maybe it will be relieved at the end. If I'm looking at uh, issues also to, towards my family or towards anybody is facing, I became much more relaxed when when the things become much more disastrous. If, if let's say in any situation I'm facing, I'm just calm. Of course, I have my my reactions sometimes when you're really pushed, but I, it changed my personality a lot. It made me a more appreciative person to the things around me and it made me look at fear or at brain tricks much more carefully and I'm, I'm able to control my brain much easier with those reactions. When he's not overseeing projects at the Dubai headquarters of a multinational company or competing in fitness challenges, Amin coaches people who want to get in better physical shape. His real motivation, though, has more to do with teaching them how to master their mind. Studies show that goal setting is an important part of success and even basic mental health. Whenever I see that someone is really wasting their life, it triggers me, or they're trying to waste my life or my time. It triggers me because I really like to give back and support. I don't believe in, in living in islands or we are alone, standalone people. We have to give to take, and this is what we are makes us humans. And if the person in front just surrenders and is moving with the flow and is letting life bash him around, it really triggers me that I have to do something about it. So for me, the, the way I look at other people, let's say, who are negative, who are, I don't know, couch potatoes, as they call them, although I don't like this abbreviation, or they do whatever they they say about that they cannot do this, it's impossible, what are you thinking? So for me, I just, first of all, I, I like to show them the possibilities. And most of my friends and people who know me, they saw that my transformation from being the normal person, I mean, athletically wise, seven to eight years ago, I was just a person who just never ran five kilometers. I was just into adventures and just, but not like physically really into it. And then they saw the transformation, how much rewarding when you are committed to it. So when I, I come to a new person, I'm, I'm discussing with them about their goals or about what, what we can do differently. I don't come with a big picture. So I come try to break it down. First, I like to understand what triggers, what really excites them. What, what brings this spark into their eye? What, what really, of course, Everyone has his reasons to become a couch potato or to become a negative person or they went through really hard times into their lives. They don't really enjoy becoming that person. But life was hard on them and we shouldn't really come and make it harder for them. We should show them the light a bit. The second step would be after you you really excite them about this initiative is to break it down for them. So if I come and talk to you about what's your biggest dream 
physically, like to do some achievement, to do some really a race, you'll come and tell me, I want to do a marathon. And you never ran one kilometer in your life. And then I will tell you, okay, what's stopping you? You'll tell me, ah, it's too much. What is this is crazy. This is a dream. I don't waste your time. It's not possible. I cannot run. I have my knee injury. I have my age. I have. There's a billion excuse that comes in mind. So once you start to break it down into very small pieces and showing them the rewarding part of this very small pieces, they are convinced because they are walking the talk. I'm not just throwing ridiculous talks into them or just uh, lecturing them. It just come, okay, let's try to do one kilometer. Let's try to do two kilometers. Let's try to do, okay, after that, let's try to do five. They will start to ask for more. They will start to be surprised with what they're experiencing. And, and this is what I went through in, in my beginning when I started to do this. And this excites hunger in them to, to ask for more. And then it's a domino effect. As part of his regular fitness activities, Amin heads a group of aspiring athletes called Accelerate Fitness. The community in Dubai has around 25 members. I designed a race uh, for them, two challenges after each other in two months. First month, they have to go from zero to 100 kilometers cycling, and all of them did it. And second uh, challenge, immediately after that, I helped them build up from zero inclination to the highest point in UAE, the mountain, uh, to climb it on bike also, on, on bicycle. We're riding every day, every week, let's say two to three times. Early in the morning, we do some intervals, trainings, we do some long uh, sessions. We just have a nice morning together and then we finish everything and you have the rest of the day fully for you. You can finish a 90 kilometer ride and still it's not even 8.30 in the morning and you have the full day for you and you're all pumped up and energetic. And their day, it's like just started. Uh, like I, I live two days in one day. My weekend is double because of this. And then you can still go and enjoy your night. And but of course, you have to think about sleep. You have to cover your seven hours sleep, but or seven or eight or even more for some people. But if you really plan it properly, you can maximize your time with whatever you have in hand. When he's not training with the group, Amin finds other creative ways to challenge himself. Sometimes I train on stairs, like uh, I used to live before in the Princess Tower. Now I moved to a normal building, but Princess Tower is the highest residential building, I think, in it got like a world record, something in Marina. But it's around 99 floors, and <laughs> it used to be one of my workouts to do this up and down uh, as a workout. Uh, now, since I don't live there anymore, I do it sometimes in the gym on the Stairmaster. And sometimes I just train different stuff because I need to be strong in all areas. I need to be really giving confidence to my body with the swimming, with the cycling, with the running, even if I don't have to race or do anything. I just need to see where are my weaknesses and, and focus on them. Whether it's rowing, sometimes I do it in the, in the beach or I just in, in the gym or I have a rower at home. So every time it's different. And then when I finish the workout, I, I have to do the recovery session which is of course stretching deep massage with the foam rollers and also <laughs> i like to do the cold water exposure the cold water exposure is when you enter a tub of ice water or really cold water which reduces the inflammation of the body for me it was not practical to fill the tub every day with ice water and just wait for it to cool and then jump in it for a few minutes and then leaving so I worked with my friend on a solution that uh, it worked for him. Then I took it into my place. We we got the freezer. Actually, he designed this first, and then I took it. It was like a freezer that, uh, you know, the freezers that are horizontal, that you open it and you put food in it. It's like a freezer that it's insulated with silicon and filled with water, and then it's cooled on, and then you control the temperature as you want. And you can put it 5 degrees, 4 degrees, 8 degrees. And yeah, it was in, in my friend's place. He had like a villa, then he went to UK. So I brought it here. So I do it every morning, almost every morning. Uh, we I jump into the freezer after my workout. and It just recovers the body. It just feels fresh. Sitting in an ice cream freezer filled with water sounds a little risky, but he knows what he's doing. I'm an electrical engineer. I, I really make sure that the plug is off. I make sure the safety uh, circuits are all connected with the fuse systems and with the breakers. So um, everything is under control. Alternatively, if finagling a freezer into an ice bath isn't for you, Amin recommends going to Longevity Sports in Dubai, an innovative center for cold water therapy. 
It's all part of a process that can transform the body and ultimately the mind. The body is is very nice system that if you trigger it, you have to trigger it to a certain level to, to see results. But if you trigger it too much, it gets injured. If you don't trigger it, you don't see any results. If you're like too recovered. So it's a balance between tension, endurance, and recovery for, for me. Like those are the main three pillars that I work around in, in training. To find out more about Amin, follow him on Instagram at amino underscore s. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like it and follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Nadia Michelle underscore. See you soon.